Hi everyone, my name is James Feeney. Welcome to or back to my channel. Today I want to share a little spell slash recipe with you all. It's a sort of coffee, tea, grounding, centering, warming recipe and spell. And so I'm going to take us over to the kitchen and walk you through how I've been making it, the benefits that I have seen and how it's worked for me, and then the various properties and how to go about making it. And of course, this is just my experience and my take and I'm going to offer a few ideas for substitutions that you might make in your own kitchen. And I think this will be really fun. I've been enjoying this recipe for grounding and feeling more centered. It's very autumnal in nature. There's a lot of spices and it's just a warm sort of comforting cup of magic. So we're gonna head over to the kitchen and we're gonna get right into the cooking and spell crafting aspect of this video. everybody so we're over at the counter I've pulled out all of the various ingredients and supplies that I'm going to be using in this autumnal grounding and warming spell slash recipe uh, I have all of these ingredients out and I'm going to take you through why I add them and what they are likewise I think you could substitute a lot of these ingredients take some out if you are not a fan of them add some in that you might like and I'll try to keep that in mind and offer some suggestions that I might recommend as far as alternatives or substitutions for various things. So I've recently relocated, so I don't have all of the normal supplies I would have in my kitchen at home. So instead of, for example, a kettle or um, a milk frother that would froth the milk and heat it at the same time for me, I'm going to be using this saucepan and I have a handheld frother, which works just as well. For milk, I'm not a big dairy fan, so I'll be using oat milk, but use whatever milk or milk uh, dairy substitute you, you like. I think oat milk, f for me personally, is one of the creamier options, and so it works well for this. Almond milk, to me, is a bit too thin. I would also recommend maybe cashew milk. I think coconut milk could be great in this recipe as well. Soy milk, um, for me, I'm just not a big almond milk person when I want something that's extra creamy, so oh, it's gonna be oat milk for me, and this is my favorite brand and I'm going to heat water and the milk in this sort of small saucepan sort of thing and then I don't have a coffee machine or maker here and so I'm going to be making mine in a French press and so make whatever type of coffee or what method of coffee you might want. I think espresso would actually be really great for this so if I had that that would be a wonderful one. I'm going to be using this decaf house blend very uh, basic in a way. I doesn't have any sort of outside flavors or anything like that. I think, uh, of course, you could go for hazelnut or something like that, but this is just very basic and I like that it'll let the spices shine through in their flavors as opposed to overpowering with a flavored coffee. So I would recommend something a little bit more generic. This is decaf. Lately, I've been liking decaf coffee a lot more. Uh, the caffeine is just a little bit too much and I haven't been liking the way that my body's reacting to it, but I like the flavor. And because this is supposed to be calming and centering and warming, the spell and this recipe, decaf might be the route to go. And of course you can always go for tea if that works for you. And so the actual spell ingredients and the ingredients that are going to set this apart from just your average coffee are honey. For me, honey is very warming, it's comforting, this is a soothing and calming ingredient, both magically and literally for me. Uh, I don't pay too much attention to book correspondences for spices and herbs. I'm not somebody who is working with anything dangerous in any sense anyway, so I don't have to pay attention to um, too much of what I'm using, and I just tend to come up with my own correspondences and what the herbs and spices make me feel and how they tend to work for me in magic. So. Take this all with a grain of salt. Your correspondences may be way different from mine, but honey for me is very calming and soothing and warming. Then we have some unsweetened natural cacao powder. And for me, this is very grounding and earthy and rich. And so it makes me feel, it, it kind of draws me into a depth. It brings me back to the earth. Raw cacao is actually quite earthy for me. Um, and this also makes me feel a lot more solid and confident and stable. To me, it's a very... Um, has very much a, a yang energy to it, and almost like a masculine energy that is gentle and calming um, and very earthy. 
Then we have cinnamon, and for me, this is going to be a bit energizing. I like to use it for a bit of luck and happiness throughout my day, so it's great in the morning to get yourself started on the right foot. And of course, cinnamon is another one of those earthy, uh, earthy and warm spices. That's kind of the tone that we have going here. It is very much an autumn, fall time drink. Then we have cloves, and for me, cloves are a bit overpowering, so I do take it pretty easy with these. And for me, these are particularly protective. I use cloves in grounding and protection very often. And for me, it's one that's very serious in nature. And so it helps me to get focused also during my day. And so that's why I love to add it. And then we have some nutmeg. And for me, this is kind of a, an herb or a spice that brings me back home. It makes me feel, it makes me feel loved. There's an element of self-love for me rooted in nutmeg. Of course, it's very warming and grounding as all of these ingredients are. They're very earthy tones, and so in that way, they're going to be centering and grounding in nature. But there is a warmth here and a happiness. So this is a great way for me to start my day with intention and to say, to, to kind of uh, start in a very focused manner so that way I can get things done. So it's subtle magic. It's nothing that's going to revolutionize my life, but it is a little daily ritual that I find benefits my day and makes things go a bit more smoothly. So we're gonna get into the cooking process. I like to heat up the water first, and then we're gonna heat up the milk afterwards while the coffee steeps in the French press. I'm gonna take you through that process and I'll show you what it looks like at the end. So you're going to want to start by bringing your water to a simmer and then get the coffee grounds going. I like to add my intention for the energy I want to have for the day. Coffee is energizing and sustaining, and so I might think about what I need to get done and the coffee helping me to get there. And then of course, once the water's done simmering, you're going to want to add it into your coffee. If you're making it in a coffee machine or something else, this will be a lot more simple. Mine wants me to have it sit for about four minutes or so at least, and so I set the little timer. Then once the time is up, I will get the press and begin to separate the grounds from the liquid. And when I do this, I like to think of there being a sort of grounding and returning to nature or returning to self, how the grounds will settle at the bottom and become compact and sturdy, and what will rise above is a more energetic, uh, life-giving fluid in a way, or in some sort of sense, at least. And so I imagine that. Once that's done, I'm going to put the oat milk on and try to bring that to about a simmer as well. And while it's on the stove, I will start to add in the cacao powder and it's really bitter in its raw form so you want to be very sparing with the amount same for nutmeg and clove and while i'm doing this i'm imagining my intentions and correspondences and what i'm hoping they will bring me as i drink this and as i add them so this is an act of magic so imbue it with the intention and add the ingredients very mindfully and with cinnamon i can add a little bit more it's one that isn't as strong as the other ingredients. And then I'm going to add in a big spoonful of honey. This part to me is uh, optional. Sometimes I make it without sweetener, but usually in the morning, especially if I'm looking to be in a good mood, I'll add a spoonful of honey. Then the milk should be at about a simmer, and so I will add it in. I think it's important to mix the ingredients and froth them together with the milk before adding the coffee. So at this point, I will use the frother to mix in and emulsify the, the milk portion. And then once it's properly frothed up, I will add in the coffee. And then I'll put a little bit of cinnamon on top just for more flavor. All right, everybody, so that takes us through the recipe and the magical working that is this autumnal, grounding, centering, cozy cup of intention. For optimal effect, I would recommend trying to drink it outside, maybe getting your feet into the earth and adding an extra layer of grounding and centering. I think during this time of year in many areas of the world, it's really beautiful during the transition of seasons. 
I know where I am currently. It's still very warm and humid. There's not much of that cool and crisp fall air that I love, but if you can get yourself outside and really dig into the earth and add another layer of connection to your outside world, I recommend it with this cup. And just putting the phone away, putting all the devices down, maybe bring a little book outside or just taking a minute to look around at what is surrounding you. Being mindful and in the moment, I think is how we would optimize the effects of this intention, this cup of intention. So let me know what you thought, if you have similar recipes, if you enjoyed this and found it helpful, I'd be curious to know. I hope you were all doing well. Like and subscribe if this was something that you enjoyed. And until next time, bye.